Now at the time of uh, Cambridge Symposium, Sherkit Ethiopia, uh, our uh, speaker, uh, Professor Ayman Abid, will speak about neuropathic pain in orthopedic practice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I've, I've been asked by um, um, one of the, our sponsors to cover the topic of uh, neuropathic pain in orthopedic patients. And this is uh, obviously one of the uh, topics that is very controversial. There is a big demand on looking at how to manage pain in orthopedic patients in general, especially that if we look at our practice, and this is the uh, general um, uh, kind of view, uh, patients are coming to orthopedic surgeons uh, in the majority of the time, the elective patients are coming because of pain. And how to manage this pain is something that we uh, perhaps would be nice to look at. So the, we'll start this talk by talking about the challenge. What type of patients are challenging us and how to, uh, to deal with these uh, problems? We, uh, we look at pain pathways and um, uh, where can we target the pain? or stop the pain cycle if we uh, can. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the concept of the multimodal analgesia, which is combination of different factors or different medications and pharmaceutical agents that can target and control pain at different uh, sites of the pain pathway. Uh, we'll consider in particular the uh, deloxetine um, as a, um, an agent to be used in patients with osteoarthritis and other pathologies. And finally, we'll be looking at the safety and the dosage of the uh, deloxetine as well as the recommendation that's being given by the uh, different bodies around the world. What is the challenge? Well, we know very well that we see patients who are not candidates for surgical intervention. They have advanced and sometimes a polyarticular arthritis. And these patients, many of them are not candidates for surgical intervention and we need some way or form to control their pain. They have had many um, uh, years of treatment with um, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and painkillers, but they are still having and feeling that pain and this is a challenge to any orthopedic surgeon. And uh, I wonder how many of you have seen patients with osteoarthritis who have had many and multiple doses of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and they are still not responding, and they are still in pain. And this pain cannot be controlled only by the non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but there are other aspects and other factors to look at and to consider in the management of these patients. The pain mechanism. This is a Danish study that was conducted um, to look at patients with inflammatory arthritis of their knees. And they found that there are 20% of the population of this study who had a form of neuropathic pain. So, and it wasn't directly correlated to the presence of or increase of inflammatory markers. So it is not the fact that the inflammation has increased within their joints and this has led to increasing their pain, but it is a kind of neuropathic pain that affects patients with inflammatory arthritis, regardless of whether you can control the inflammation or not. This would took us to look at what are the criteria for the presence of neuropathic type of symptoms in patients with arthritis. Usually, you get these patients who are coming to complain that they are feeling pins, uh, as uh, there are pins or, uh, or needles in their uh, legs. There, is, uh, uh, there are some other patients who have hyperalgesia, and there are others who have allodynia. Obviously, this is regardless of how much the joint is damaged. 20 to 23 percent of the patients with knee arthritis have some form of neuropathic pain. So it's not only pain that is related to the inflammation within the joint. And when we look at the pain pathway, this is a very complex, as an orthopedic surgeon, I look at this and, and say, oh, this is very difficult for me to grasp in my brain. I can't look at this, so it's too much. But generally speaking, if you look at the pain pathway, it starts peripherally, and if you, uh, you think that, yes, we are focusing, sorry, I went one, uh, one ahead. Um, 
when you, when you look at this and um, uh, all what we are concerned with in our treatment for patients with osteoarthritis is what's happening at the joint level. We don't look at the rest of the uh, pain pathway to try to target the pain control at other areas rather than just giving an steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or controlling the pain by painkillers. But perhaps we have to look at what's called the multimodal um, analgesia by looking at different sites of the pain cycle that we can stop the pain at this level. So instead of just thinking of that you can control the pain by looking at how level that's the pain and the pain at multiple levels rather than at a single level which is the joint level what is the uh, effect of the uh, deluxe brain or deluxe team thank you very much um, the deluxe team um, works by inhibiting the serotonin as well as the norepinephrine um, uh, reuptake and this is obviously without going into much detail is going to affect uh, first order neurons as well as the second order neurons and the, it blocks the pain at different levels of the pain cycle instead of just focusing in one level what the uh, uh, does as a centrally acting analgesic? Well, it has been tried for patients with knee osteoarthritis, and this is 13 weeks uh, uh, double randomized trial of the 60 to 90 milligram versus placebo, over 200 patients with knee osteoarthritis, and it was superior to uh, placebo in pain as well as the physical component or score of the WMAC score and there was no difference in the uh, side effects. So it has been proved already that deluxetine plays a role in controlling pain for patients with knee osteoarthritis. Um, uh, this is the uh, recommendation for the uh, American College of Rheumatology, um, and it appeared around eight years ago or so. There are some patients who are resistant to the use of only painkillers, non steroidal intraarticular hyaluronic acid, and there is a rule to be played with the uh, deluxetine. Um, it, it can be used in some patients with resistant pain as a result of osteoarthritis of the knee. So if it has been tried before, yes, it has been tried before and it's proved to be effective. And actually it has been recommended by one of the um, uh, well-respected uh, uh, groups, which is American College of Rheumatology. Uh, when we look at um, uh, the recommendation of the um, uh, osteoarthritis and cartilage group, they have recommended the use of deluxetine in patients with knee-only osteoarthritis. If it is multiple joint affection without comorbidities can be used, and even if the, in the presence of comorbidities, deluxetine can still be used in the, in, the, um, uh, uh, in the group of patients with knee osteoarthritis, whether it is a single joint affection, multiple joint affection, whether it is in presence or absence of um, uh, 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 other comorbidities. So it is safe to be used in this group of patients and commended by the osteoarthritis and cartilage group. How about the uh, low back pain? Well, if, if deluxetine uh, or neuropathic type of pain is present in patients with knee osteoarthritis and patients with multiple or inflammatory arthritis, there is a component of the pain that happens in patients with low back pain as a neuropathic type of pain. And this is to show the um, uh, effect of, again, deluxetine uh, in patients with um, uh, 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 low back pain. Uh, there is a, a, a consideration or a, a a big sector of the pain in patients with low back pain as an aerobathic type of pain and deluxetine has been recommended in these. In fact, when you compare it to the other or the competitor, which are the bregabalin and the gababentin, uh, they have very limited effect in the neuropathic type of pain that results from the low back pain, while deluxetine is more efficient and effective and have a clear effect on these patients. Um, in the, uh, again, in a systematic pharmacological uh, therapy for the low back pain, deluxetine has been shown to, be, to have a moderate effect, while the pregabalin have insufficient evidence to support the use of uh, pregabalin in low back pain. Uh, let's look at the NICE guideline 
for neuropathic pain. If we are talking about patients with osteoarthritis, to patients with low back pain, and there is another group of patients who have neuropathic type of pain with peripheral neuropathy or, um, or another pathology that results in neuropathic pain. Again, duloxetine has been recommended by the Knights. We know that the Knights is the National Institute of Clinical Excellence in the UK. And this is, um, uh, has been recommended, again, along with other uh, type of um, uh, uh, medications for patients with neuropathic pain or peripheral neuropathy. I mean, if, um, uh, in having said that, we know now that it, is, it, is, it has a role to play in patients with osteoarthritis, low back pain, as well as neuropathic pain. And it is FDA approved for the use in this group of patients. Low back pain as well as osteoarthritis, you can find the duloxetine uh, uh, is recommended by the FDA or approved by the FDA to be used in the three group of patients, patients with osteoarthritis, patients with uh, low back pain, as well as patients with neuropathic type of pain or peripheral neuropathy. While in comparison, the other competitors of this drug, which are the pregabalin and gabapentin, can only be used in patients with peripheral um, uh, neuropathy, but are not recommended to be used in patients with low back pain and osteoarthritis like the uh, duloxetine. Um, how about dose adjustment and the suitability to use with these patients with multiple comorbidities? Duloxetine doesn't need to have a dose adjustment for the elderly population. And as you can see here, it's only to, uh, to uh, not recommend it in patients with uh, severe renal impairment with a creatinine clearance less than 30 milli per minute. While the brigabalin and gabapentin are not recommended for the elderly population um, who may have uh, uh, renal disorders. And for sure, all the groups or all the medications are not recommended for patients with renal or severe renal affection of creatinine clearance less than 30. Uh, so when we compare the um, deluxetine to the um, uh, other competitors, brigaplin and gabapentin, we find out that it is FDA approved and recommended by multiple uh, bodies around the world, the NICE group as well as the American College of uh, Rheumatology. It has a rapid onset that starts after one week in comparison to the other, which is uh, uh, a minimum of uh, 14 days or 13 days. It doesn't need those adjustment for patients with renal, mild renal impairment or for the elderly population, while the other uh, group uh, shouldn't be used in elderly population above 65 and in patients with renal um, uh, creatinine clearance less than 60 ml per minute. Uh, the dose compliance, duloxetine is taken once daily, while the others can, uh, you need to take multiple doses and need titration and increasing the dose over time. Uh, on long-term use, it's safe to be used for long-term, while the others only for five months, and there is no risk of addiction with duloxetine when compared to the brigaplin and gabapentin. So in all aspects, the duloxetine is recommended for patients with, or can be used for patients with osteoarthritis, low back pain, as well as neuropathic pain, while there are a question mark on the use of the competitors on these um, uh, groups. Um, finally, as I took home message, um, uh, deluxetine has a role in patients with osteoarthritis, low back pain, and neuropathic pain. It has rapid action, and it is um, uh, very uh, uh, easy for patients to comply with a single dose per day. Uh, it doesn't need adjustment in the elderly of the dose for the elderly population, and, um, uh, um, uh, but it is not recommended in patients with uh, severe renal impairment with creatinine clearance uh, less than 30 ml per minute and can be used in the long term without risk of addiction. And thank you very much for your attention. If you have uh, any questions, I'll be delighted to, uh, to answer to this. Uh, Dr. Dr. Ayman. Uh, just five minutes for discussion. Uh, any question for uh, Professor Rabid? Ayman, do you use deloxetine as a, reg as a regimen for post-operative analgesia in major joint uh, operations? Um, uh, it, can, it can be used. I mean, um, I, I, in general, I, uh, in general um, you know, uh, uh, as a, to control pain as a multimodal analgesia or prophylactic analgesia we talk about, uh, there are multiple sites of pain to stop the pain cycle at. So perhaps an, for a knee replacement, for example, yeah. um, you can perform preoperatively dexamethasone with the induction of anesthesia can be given as you a single shoot. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, the local infiltration intraoperatively in the gutters and the posterior capsule of uh, lidocaine. Uh, along, obviously, this is usually a cocktail. So it is lidocaine with antibiotics and, uh, and uh, corticosteroids um, uh, as well. So it's a cocktail of injection into the gutters and the posterior capsule. Wait, wait. Do you use steroids local as a, as a regimen for... Uh, not a regimen. I gave it intramuscular only. Intramuscular, not yes. Muscular. Uh, but it is usually a cocktail of um, uh, local anesthetic along with antibiotic that's injected into the joint. Uh, in addition to epidural analgesia, as well as the uh, uh, deluxetine or the uh, uh, type of uh, uh, deluxetine that you are going to give at night time for these patients. If you, if you follow that protocol, uh, in fact, this has been shown to affect not only the post-operative pain, but the longer-term outcome in terms of functional outcome in the longer term. So controlling pain at the time of the operation is something that we have to think of as a prophylactic treatment. We shouldn't wait for the patient to develop the pain, and then we start giving him the painkillers. That's right. So the, the recommendation here to use some of the, uh, the, 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 the lexitine in the night before surgery, yes. and then you use it for some few days after surgery with, and yes. with the normal analgesics. That's yes. right. Um, question? Yeah. Any, any more questions in regard to the uh, use in osteoarthritis patients or patients with resistance, pay, resistant pain or not responding to the nostroidals? I see. You, you showed us in the first slide here an advanced osteoarthritis of the knee. Do you think the luxetine will be effective in such kind of severe deformities and pain? Some, some patients are coming to the clinic and with this degree of advanced arthritis, obviously the first recommendation if the patient is a suitable candidate for surgical intervention, surgery would be the answer. But I'm sure that you, you as I do, and the rest of the uh, uh, audience, we see many patients with advanced arthritis who are not willing to have a surgical intervention done or they have other comorbidities that would stop us from doing the surgical intervention. We see these patients and they are asking for help. Uh, and in many occasions, these patients, you, can, you cannot give strong non because of the other comorbidities, hepatic and renal disorders and cardiac patients. Perhaps this is the role of the uh, deluxity and in these type of patients. They are coming, not only their knees are painful, but the whole limb is painful. You cannot touch the ankle, you cannot touch the thigh, and they feel pins and needles in their leg all the time. Perhaps this is the role of the deluxetine, the because I think in, in some of these patients, neuropathic type of pain exists in addition to the... Do you know why they have neuropathic pain, kind of pain? Um, uh, I'm not sure of the mechanism most, of this. Most of these patients having severe deformities have lower back affection. So most of them have some sort of sciatica and lower back pain. So maybe using teroxetine will be have a combined effect in the back and the back. Maybe, yeah. yes. You, you're right. Um, okay, we go to lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.